it's our great privilege to host this rather remarkable event that uh, covers the transatlantic region in one of the most important public policy questions of our time, which is the whole issue of energy governance. I think this uh, is the right time to have a conversation about shale gas between the U.S. and uh, Europe because the, if shale gas is as profound uh, in Europe as we believe it may be in certain countries at least, uh, the implications for changing the whole structure of the international gas market are front and center. I think it's very timely because there's so much interest in the energy market because of what's happening in uh, the Middle East, what's happening in Japan with a nuclear accident, and also uh, now people are beginning to recognize that there are really huge shale gas volumes available around the world, and people are beginning to realize it could change the market and it could change the security of the countries which hold those reserves, and that in includes Europe, but it also includes China. So it's great that the university is organizing something like this. It seems to make sense to me that CU would host an event like this because the energy question, you know, throughout Central Europe, you know, it's also a national security question. It can be a huge issue as, as Europe found in 2006 and 2009 when gas disputes between Russia and Ukraine meant that gas flows to Europe stopped. So this has an issue, it has big implications for, for both uh, the economics and the politics of the region. If the hype converts into reality, then the consumers can look forward to a future floating on a sea of extremely cheap gas, which would be very nice. However, if the hype turns out to be hype and doesn't translate into reality, then five to ten years down the road we're in serious trouble because gas demand unquestionably is going to increase for a variety of reasons. And of course the problem is five to ten years down the road we're going to be saying, hang on a minute, where is the gas supply coming from? Oh, those investments that we should have made five to ten years ago, we didn't make them and so we're facing shortages. Potentially, gas can be used both conventional and unconventional gas, can be used as a pathway towards a more renewable future. So the question is, how can you factor in the development of something like shale gas, which initially is considered to have environmental consequences, but which in the long term can be argued is environmentally beneficial because it can promote movement to a renewable future. And that was the kind of issue that got addressed at the conference. Shale gas is, has been a huge game changer in the United States in terms of our overall energy supply. Um, I think it has potential um, to dramatically reduce CO2 emissions from power generation. And, and there are a lot of lessons learned in the U.S. that I think can be uh, replicated in uh, Europe. The lucky coincidence is that the shale gas revolution started in a country in the United States, which has a very large coal-fired power plant fleet, has practically unlimited coal resources, uh, where before the shale gas revolution, it was very, very difficult to imagine what would beat coal uh, in the United States electricity system. Now with the shale gas revolution, it is actually happening. Shale gas has a relevance over the next let's say five to 10 years for a lot of different dimensions. And therefore, I think Central European University can also play a role in being uh, an objective outside uh, player that is a forum for bringing together people that discuss these issues as they become uh, potentially uh, increasingly more relevant for European uh, supplies and energy security issues. It's blindingly obvious, it's staring you in the face and energy transition is inevitable. The question is, how does that transition take place? To what extent do you tackle energy supply and look for alternatives to oil to reduce emissions? To what extent do you tackle demand to, to, uh, to manage how efficiently uh, we use the energy that we consume? How much can we rely on technology to come to the rescue? In order to understand what will be the consequences uh, worldwide in different countries, we need to discuss this as much transparently, as much openly as it will be practical. We, by the definition, have different views, uh, but we are living in the same small global energy world. The more global it is, the smaller it is. Uh, we are interdependent. 
and we need to forget about any sort of uh, energy independency. The, the conference has done a good job of, again, it's brought together the right mix of people who can talk about this issue both from government perspectives, from industry perspectives, and then from an academic perspective. And I think having those sorts of groups come together is a way to really explore the issues in a lot of detail. Well, I clearly think it's an interesting mix. Uh, I, may, I must say what I do particularly like it is people from Eastern Europe, it's people from Western Europe, it's the transatlantic uh, uh, component with uh, many representatives from the, U from the US and this gives a, I would say, an audience that's a lot broader than what you would usually find in, in conferences in Europe. Mm -hmm.